Hi everybody, we're going to do some more problems and here it goes. Um, I get some ink that'll help. During an exercise, a person gives off 180 kilocalories of heat in 30 minutes by evaporation of water from the skin. How much water has been lost? Okay, this is now a latent heat problem. Um, we want to know just from the process of evaporation how much water has been lost. If you recall, the quantity of heat that goes from vaporization, the heat of vaporization, is the mass of the liquid times the latent heat of vaporization. The latent heat of vaporization of water is 540 uh, calories per gram, which ramps up to 540 kilocalories per kilogram. Whoops, kilocalories per kilogram. Now, I want to know how much water has been lost. What we're really looking for, we're really, really looking for mass. So mass is going to be equivalent to quantity of heat divided by that latent heat of vaporization. So if this person has actually um, worked off 180 kilocalories and, how, and the latent heat of vaporization is 540 kilocalories per kilogram of water, if I grab my calculator, um, 180 divided by 540, that is 0 0.333 repeating kilograms. Kilocalories cancel. Kilograms are in the sub-basement, which means they come upstairs. That is that much water. So that is the mass of the water. Now, this problem actually also, it's nice to know volume. So what is the volume of water that this actually is? If you recall from long ago and far away, um, one milliliter of water has a volume of one gram. So if I've got 0.333 kilograms, 0.333 kilograms is equivalent to 333 grams of water, and 333 grams of water would be 333 milliliters of water. And that's one of the reasons one hydrates when you are exercising, because you give off water to stay cool. You evaporate that away. Next problem, how much heated heat is needed to melt 16.5 kilograms of silver that is initially at 20 degrees Celsius? So when we are at a temperature when something is at a solid and then we're taking it to melt, um, we're taking it to a liquid state, Here's what we have to go back to. If you recall, we spent in lecture, we spent a lot of time talking about this right here, this graph of um, added, added heat, okay, added heat, and this is temperature. And in this state, things are a solid. Here they're actually melting, and here they are going to be a liquid. So we are going to start out with our silver in a solid state, and we are going to end up with it melted. Now, in order to do that, every time you change a section in this graph, it is another part of your equation. So the equation needed to calculate this, I am going to do this. The total heat required is going to be equivalent to the amount of heat to warm the silver and warm it from what to what? Well, from its original temperature, which is at 20 degrees Celsius, up to its melting temperature. And we're going to look that up on a chart in order to find that melting temperature. Plus, so this is going to be my warming section, plus the amount of heat to melt. And then this is going to be the section the amount of heat to melt that silver. When you are using this chart, every section that has a warming is going to be an MC delta T. So my total is going to be the mass of my silver, specific heat of my silver, 
change in temperature of the silver. Ag is the atomic symbol for silver. To melt the silver, we are going to use the equation for latent heat of fusion. Quantity of heat to fuse something is the latent heat of fusion times mass. So this is going to be the latent heat of fusion of silver times the mass of silver we're talking about here. So the mass of silver we are talking about is going to be 16.5 kilograms. Specific heat of silver, that is on the constant sheet that I gave you, and that is 230 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Change in temperature. Okay, let's talk about this change in temperature. The melting temperature of silver, the melting temperature of silver, and which can be read off of that, one of the charts on that constant sheet, is 961 degrees Celsius. That's the final temp where it starts to melt, and it starts at 20 degrees Celsius. So that is the change in temperature of my silver. The latent heat of fusion of silver, where do you get that number? from the chart that says latent heats of fusion, look up silver, and the latent heat of fusion for silver is 880,000 joules per kilogram, and we're multiplying that by 16.5 kilograms of silver. So as we do this, this whole portion of the calculation, I end up with 3 million 571095 joules. This section is 1,452,000,000 joules. Add them all together and round off for sig figs. The total heat involved is 5.02 times 10 to the sixth joules or 5.02 million joules of heat energy. A lot of heat required to warm and then melt something.